part two on the algebraic Keynesian model. Okay? In our first part of the model, we calculated an equilibrium Y star of $3,139. That's how much spending is going on in the economy. And in the Keynesian world, that's either not enough spending to create jobs for everybody, or it may be too much spending, people trying to buy more than the economy can produce. Or maybe it's between the two. It's not too little, it's not too much, it's just right. Sounds like a little Three Little Pigs fairy tale, right? Maybe that was Goldilocks. In a long time. Here's my point. We know how much spending is happening in the economy. What we would also like to know is how much spending would be happening in the economy if the economy were at full employment. If everybody that was looking for a job had a job, with what exception? We talked about this about unemployment. We said that in any economy at any point in time, there will always be two kinds of unemployment that will exist. You can't get rid of all of it. That was structural unemployment, people whose skills are mismatched, who are suffering discrimination in the market, who are geographically immobile, can't move. Remember that? Structural unemployment. And, remember the other one, frictional or transitional unemployment, people who are between jobs. We'll always have some of that. So we say, look, we know there will always be frictional and structural unemployment to some degree. And so we're going to assume, for simplicity's sake, that those equal a 5% unemployment rate. So now we really want to know how much would spending be if we got to this level of unemployment, which we will call full employment spending or full employment income or full employment output. All three terms are interchangeable. Here's how much spending that would occur, whatever it is, at full employment, and we want to compare that to how we're doing today. So in the model, I will also tell you what the full employment income or spending level is. Let's make one up. I made one up here. $3,600. So look at the contrast. If there were $3,600 of spending going on in the economy, that much spending would create jobs for everybody except this 5%. That much spending would result in full employment by our definition. But what's going on? Well, the economy is not spending that much. We have a deficiency of spending. Too little. Now, in the Keynesian world, you either have too little spending, or too much spending, or just right. You never have just right, okay? You always try to get there, but it's kind of like trying to hit a moving target. But either too little spending or too much. And it's a simple Keynesian view that way. It's an either-or world. You have too little spending or too much spending. Now, if you have too little spending, like we have here, you have a recession. You haven't created enough, enough jobs for everybody to have a job. And in fact, you have a recessionary gap. Many textbooks call it a deflationary gap, same thing. And it, we can measure it in terms of dollars. The deficiency between where we are and where we need to be. 3,600 minus 139, 3139. What do you get? The deficiency is... $471. See that? That's the gap, and in the, the symbols that I'm going to use in a minute, that is the change in equilibrium that we need. We'll need two dollar cents. The change in equilibrium we need to go to full employment is $471. That is the gap. In this case, it's a recessionary gap because spending is too low. Okay with me? Let's see how we would also show this on a graph. In the Keynesian world, and you should have been reading on this beforehand, we show an aggregate supply curve that is horizontal 
out to this full employment level of output. This would be YFE. And at full employment, the supply curve becomes vertical. When you see that sharp break in the, serve, in the supply curve, you know you're looking at a Keynesian model. We call, I call this, the sharp break Keynesian supply curve. Because you're either going to have a demand curve here or here. You're either going to be down here below full employment or you're going to be trying to spend more out here. You're going to have too much spending. Now, we know what YFE was. It was given to us a minute ago, $3,600. And we know that we calculated our equilibrium at somewhere back here, $3,139. Remember, this is GDP. Okay. And this is the price level or a measure of the rate of inflation. We know we're here at this level of output. We know that the unemployment rate here is 5%. And since we aren't producing that much, the unemployment rate here is higher. Let's guesstimate that it is 8.5%. And since this is where we are, that's where the aggregate demand curve goes through the aggregate supply curve. This is our equilibrium. We get all of this from the model, from the numbers. And you'll have to be ready to do that. Calculate the numbers. Compare what's going on to full employment. Describe what's going on and then draw a graph to represent that. Can you tell me up here, where's the recessionary gap? Where is the deficiency in spending? And the answer is, it's this distance right here. The distance or difference between how much we're spending now in the economy and how much we need to spend to create full employment. So this is the gap. We know because it's below full employment, it's a recessionary gap. And we know the gap is called delta Y star, and it's $471. All right? Okay. Let's go to the next step. What have we got so far? We've got an equilibrium of $3139 and a recessionary gap of $471. Keynes is all about what are we going to do about this? You remember the classical response to that recession with all these people unemployed? The classical was, response was to wait and let the economy correct itself. Hopefully that sounds familiar. Keynes's response was you can't wait. If you wait, it'll take a long time. And it'll be very, very painful, unnecessarily painful. There are things you can do. So, Let's get into what Keynes suggests we can do. And to do that, we need to talk about the spending multiplier. I abbreviate that with the letter K. Mathematically, kind of anticipating myself, K is 1 divided by 1 minus our important keystone term in the model the marginal propensity to consume. Now let's talk about how that works. Let's, let's make, for an example, let's say that the MPC is 0.90, which tells us that people in our economy on the average, every time they receive another $100, they got to spend $90 of it. But don't stop there. Suppose I received $100 from the government for being so damn good looking. And what would I do with it? Well, I would put $10 in the, in the bank, and I'd take the other $90, and I would go spend it. That's my marginal propensity to consume. But suppose I come down and spend that $90 in your business. What's that to you? Well, that's income. And if you just received $90, what will you do with it? You'll spend 90% of it. Now, look what's happening. Government spent $100 on Strickland. Strickland spent $90 on you. You take that money, having the same MPC, and you go out and spend how much of it? 90% of $90. You spend $81 on your employees or supplies or whatever. But think about it now. If that's $81 you spent, that was $81 in income to somebody. 
To the extent that that was income, what do they do with it? They spend 90% of it. So what's 90% of $81? I don't know. How about $72.90? And that process repeats itself as that money gets spent and respent and respent. And, and these numbers are, are a bit of an exaggeration from reality, but they're really intended to illustrate the concept. So what we have is a continuing increase in the flow of spending that's going to total up, well, what do we got so far? 192.71, uh, 341, 343, almost $344 so far, and it continues. At its theoretical maximum, here's what would happen. The, to the change in total spending, I'm going to call it delta Y star, right? Change in spending is K times the change in government spending. Very important equation for us to remember. In this model, what it means is when government increased spending by $100, calculate the MPC, 1 over 1 minus 0.90, 1 over 0.10, 10. Our multiplier is 10. This $100 increase by government spending would translate theoretically into a $1,000 increase in total spending in the economy. So the government, by spending a relatively small amount, creates a lot more jobs, income, etc. And again, this is the theoretical basis. More commonly, when we talk about multipliers and the multiplier effect of a change in government spending, we talk about within the relatively short term when we talk about multipliers of maybe two or three. But imagine all of this, conceptually, theoretically, and try to understand that multiplier concept, which can make government spending, if they increase spending, so powerful in kicking off the economy, and can make a reduction in government spending do just the opposite. That's when suddenly your income gets cut, so you reduce your spending, so you're not down at Joe's pool hall spending money, so he's got less money, and so this can work in reverse as well as work forward. Okay? Now, with the multiplier concept, what we do now, you might want to figure out the multiplier for different MPCs as an exercise. Uh, go back to our problem. We said we had a gap. The change in Y star that we needed was $471. Do you remember the MPC from our first model? The MPC was 0.95. If that's the MPC, can you tell me what the multiplier is? Well, the multiplier is 1 over 1 minus the MPC, which is 1 over 1 minus 0.95 or 0.05. So the multiplier now is 20. And when you go back to the concept, we say, well, how much do you want to change spending? Well, if you change government spending, it will be multiplied a multiple of times. Plug in the numbers for a minute and see what we get. If we want a $471 change in total spending and the multiplier is 25, what happens? What's 25 into 471? I forgot my calculator. Looks like it's about 16 plus 2 is 18. So... Delta G, 471 over 25, maybe I do have that here, let's see. Not over 25, I made a mistake there, didn't I? 20. No wonder, that's a lot easier. Uh, this comes up $23.55. That's the change in government spending that if multiplied through the economy, theoretically, would boost total spending by $471, would increase enough spending to create enough jobs to move us to full employment. You tracking with me okay on that? This then becomes another very critical equation for you to remember. I want to figure out what's going on in my model and see how big the gap is between where I am and where I want to be. I want to calculate the multiplier based on the MPC in the model. And with those two pieces of information, I can tell how government needs to respond to the economy to boost it back to full employment. 
All right? Let's turn this around one last little twist on it. We know that the other route under Keynes for government to pursue this improvement in the economy is not necessarily to spend more money, but instead to cut taxes to the economy, to reduce taxes so people and businesses have more money to spend. So we have a slight change up here. When we use taxes, let's use a different color, our, for, our equation becomes delta Y star equals K times the change in taxes. That's much like the last one, government. But there's a middle term in here. You plug in the MPC. Okay? That's because when government gives you a tax cut, you don't run out and spend every dollar. You usually save some part of every dollar you get. So in our model here, we would have 471 equals 20 times 0.95 times delta Tx. 95 times 20 is 19. We would say delta Tx is 471 divided by 19. And I did that with 2. It comes out $24.79. That's the change in taxes. So what was the change in government again? To get that, they would have had to change government spending by 2355. So it's either this or this. You don't do them both. You look at them as alternatives. Now you can do a blend of them, of course, but we don't want to have to do that kind of math. But here's the key, key question right now at this point in the model. The economy is in a recession. There's not enough spending. Unemployment is up over the natural rate. Remember, 8.5%. The economy is in a recession. There is not enough spending. That is the Keynesian view. What do you need to do then? Do you need to reduce or increase taxes on the economy? In order to get more spending, you cut taxes so people have more money. So your solution here should say reduce taxes by 24.79. Or in the alternative, what should you do with government spending if you wanted to create more spending in the economy? You should increase government spending. They work in opposite directions. So as you work the model, I don't worry about negative signs and all that stuff. Just common sense. If you've got a recession, you need more spending or less taxes. If you come up with an equilibrium that's too high beyond full employment, you've got inflation and you have to do the opposite. Raise taxes, reduce spending. Remember, these are the tools, spending and taxes. These are the tools of fiscal policy. And in Keynes' view, those are the tools you use to restore an economy back to or at least towards full employment when it goes through some particular malaise like the Great Depression. And so many people today uh, looking at the United States and European economies uh, are advocating a Keynesian solution because those economies are in recession and they're advocating greater tax cuts and or more government stimulus. And they are in contrast to the people who are worried about very high levels of debt and who are advocating austerity measures. That's to put it in perspective. In the third phase, we'll talk about this model and its implications for the government's budget and hopefully have us a tool by which we can we can talk about what's going on in the economy and this policy versus that policy what would it do okay that's the end of part two